What's up, friends? Just uh, here at night, midnight, just doing a little Bible study. I'm in the book of Romans, and uh, th this book is great. I mean, this has been said to be one of the most best books in the whole Bible. Um, a lot of uh, scholars and stuff revere the book of Romans to be just one of the best. They're all good, but this one has a lot of information on it, and uh, it's written to uh, us, the Gentiles, so... That, um, this this is Apostle Paul writing to uh, to Rome, and I believe he wrote this letter to Rome even before he had visited Rome. He he hadn't even been to Rome, I don't believe, um, and he wrote this letter to the Romans, us Gentiles, all the non-Jews basically. And um, just a couple little verses I'd like to go over here. Um, this is chapter eight, verse six. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So that one is speaking to me a lot, um, especially as I'm struggling with sin and trying to crucify my <laughs> body, you know. It's hard, struggling with the beer and stuff like that, some other things. But this is just a reminder that, um, you know, our sin leads to death. And I know a lot of Christians don't like to hear this part of it but you know there it is but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so we want to strive every day we have breath in our lungs we want to strive for uh, Christ we want to be spiritually minded we want to have our focus on on this word and um, and of godly things and we got to do the best to crucify the flesh for instance you know I have to do my best to get rid of my beer. <laughs> I need to quit buying Heinekens. They're, they're not good, folks. Um, some people don't struggle. You know, other people have different struggles. I'm not saying you can't drink. But we all know the things for for us that that uh, we're, we're weak in. You know, I, you know I, my family's alcoholics on my dad's side. And I'm not saying that's the reason. But it seems to be in our family that we have problems with that type of stuff. Um, so we're, we're all, we're all like clay, you know, Jesus is, is working on us all and molding us all. But, uh, here's another verse that I like and, um, Romans chapter eight, same chapter, verse 10. And it, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So that goes with verse six, you know, we want to be in Christ. And how do we do that? Well, we read his word. <laughs> We pray, we uh, do our best to stay away from things of the world. Um, there's another verse in here I'd like to show you. Let's see, there's a lot of them. I've been highlighting everything in this book. Um, oh, here's one that you may have heard in a lot of movies. And it's usually not misquoted, but they only like to read the first part of it. Romans 8, 28, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. Okay, <laughs> that's usually where they stop. I was watching this show recently. I believe it was called Manifest. It's actually a really good show. It's on Netflix. It's about these people on on a plane, take a little plane trip, and they get back from the plane trip, and it seems they've been gone for five years, even though they thought they were gone for two hours. Good show anyway. I know they use this one. They use it over and over again in that show. And we know that all things work together for good. They don't finish it. To them that love God. To them who are the called according to his purpose. All right? So uh, they, only, they only use like half of that. But that's a great, great verse. And we all know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So you got to love God. Part of loving God is trusting in Him and what He says. And, you know, if you read this Bible and you trust it, you, you, you trust it in its entirety, the whole thing. You don't pick and choose, you know, the things you like. There's some things in here that I don't like. <laughs> that kind of, you know, kind of get your attention. They kind of, you read it and you, you don't get a good feeling. That that's 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 our sin nature. It, it wants to rebel, but we have to stay stay with the word. 
even if it doesn't feel good to read it sometimes. Um, so that's another good one right there. You know, I don't really have like a um, notes on Bible study. I just wanted to share this with you, what I'm kind of going through right now. Um, oh, this is another good one. Chapter 8, verse 37 through 39. I'll read that. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. This is Paul speaking again. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, the evil things of the world, basically, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, with, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, so that's great right there. Nothing can separate us from God's love. And we know this earth is, is evil. And uh, it's ran by Satan and principalities and darkness and high places. And, um, you know, it says here, though, that, that we can't be separated from God if, if as long as we're in Jesus Christ. And we know we're in him if we believe what he says, if we repent, if we come to him and, and we trust. It's by faith that we're in Christ Jesus. And um, good little verse there. Oh, this is a good one. Chapter 9. Verse 21, hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? That's big. The way I'm reading that is like, he, he can make us any way he wants to. And um, not everybody's going to honor God, obviously. Many won't, actually. It says few will find the narrow road. There's not everybody's going to be saved, unfortunately. That's 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 horrible to think about. Um, but yeah, he he could do anything he wants with us. Just like if we were to make a a clay vessel or something like that. I remember in grade school we made cups, clay. We made clay things, and they would put it in a heater, and they'd they would last. We'd make masks or cups out of clay, and we can do whatever we want to with them. I decided to make a cup that had some holes in it. It didn't hold liquid, so it was leaking, I think. That's <laughs> what an eight-year-old does. I uh, poured my grandma some coffee. She loved this cup that I made her. I poured her some coffee one morning <laughs> thinking she was going to be happy. You know, She loved this little clay thing I made her, and it started leaking out. And she was like, no, no. <laughs> Pour it in a regular coffee cup. I thought she wanted to drink it out of my coffee cup. Nope. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked there. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just up here to chapter uh, 10. So, just getting through it. Just kind of reading it slowly. Marking some things I really like. Let me go back here. A little tired right now. I gotta, gotta get that pot of coffee going on over there. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. These are all great verses to, to remember, to recite back to. What's this one? 6, chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's a great verse right there. The way I read that one is even though we're saved by grace, we shouldn't continue in our sin because that's basically walking all over the blood of Jesus. We're taking, you, we know when we're taking advantage of, of God and I've done it too. And, uh, we need to stop that. It says here, shall that grace may abound. God forbid. Yeah. You know, God has so much grace on us, but that doesn't give us the right to just, you know, do what we want, party, come back and continually repent, repent, repent. 
yeah, God will forgive us probably, but we don't we don't want to test that. That's murky waters right there. That's how I've always felt like, you know, we, we should always feel bad when we fall short. I know I do, even though I go back to sin sometimes. I, I, I feel, it, I, it makes me sick. I, I'm really frustrated lately because of it. So that's a good sign right there. You're in a dangerous spot when you don't have that remorse, when it doesn't disgust you, when it when you're just fine with it. There, that's a dangerous spot. Um, I never want to get to that point. Especially now when I think the rapture is about to happen. I really believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. I don't see it any other way. Um, I think that seven-year tribulation is for the Jews to get them right. So that's the way I see that. I'll do a video on that. But yeah, there's a lot of people having rapture dreams right now. And they're posted all over YouTube. Jesus says in the end days, you know, uh, old men will have vi visions and young men dreams or vice versa. <laughs> I think I had it backwards. But yeah, there's going to be an outpouring of the spirit and people are going to have many dreams and visions. So I'm still waiting on some of my dreams and visions. I, I, <laughs> I'll let you know if I have any. I haven't really yet. Nothing, nothing crazy at least. I had a dream of a fireball the other day coming towards me. Me or the earth, I don't know. It woke me up, so I don't know what that could have mean. Hopefully a fireball isn't going to come towards us. Um, what is this? Know ye not that many of us, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Okay, let me read that again. Know ye not, saying, do you not know, basically, that so many of us, as we're baptized into Jesus Christ, we're baptized into his death. <clears throat> so when Jesus died, you know, he, he died, obviously, for our sin. And so basically it's saying here, the way I'm reading this, is that when we when we get baptized and we re repent and we trust in Jesus, basically our old ways have to die as Jesus died. Our, our old sin nature needs to die. You know, that's what it means to uh, crucify the flesh is, is denying the things that you know are, are sinful. And that's the hardest thing to do because it's death. Nobody wants to die. We love our sin. I do. I can, I'm speaking for myself. It, it's hard to stop doing the things you know you're supposed to. But that what that's what it means to die to oneself. And there's many other scriptures in here that go into it more, but... You know, it's asking the reader, you, you think you're going to keep going on in your sin, you, you're going to be surprised. It doesn't work like that. Let's see. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, our old ways and body, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. See, we shouldn't serve it. Our old, once, we're, once we're in Christ, we... We're going to do our best to serve him and not what we want. And that's a battle every day. You've got to remember we're in a fight. <clears throat> God tells us we're in a fight against with good and evil. We struggle not against flesh and blood, but of principalities and darkness and high places. I uh, forget that verse. But yeah, it's, we all are going to struggle with sin every day of our life. That's just... The way it is. Let not sin therefore reign, reign in your body, mortal body, that ye should obey it and the lust thereof. Notice how it says lust thereof. That's, that's a struggle for many of us, I think, especially as guys. You know, we're visual creatures. Um, Book of Romans, man, this is just full of Good stuff. Anyway, that's where I guess I'll kind of leave it at for today. I, I wasn't going to do a video. I wasn't prepared, so. <clears throat> and I haven't read this whole Bible yet, folks. I've only read, I've read the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, and I got bored of that. And I realized that the. The meat and potatoes was the New Testament. This is the saving word. This is the, the gospel. This is the good news, they call it. 
Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all those books. I started in the, the book of Matthew, and so far I'm in Romans here. And I've learned so much already. Um, there's a lot of good people out there I've been watching and learning from. If you're new to the Bible, just know that, you know, you got the Old Testament, and then you got the New Testament. The Old Testament was written first, obviously, a lot of old books written for the Jews. And it had a lot of laws they had to abide by. I believe the Jews had like, before Christ came, I believe they had over 600 laws to try and fulfill. And it was impossible. Nobody could follow it. It was so hard. Like they used to have, you couldn't even wear certain um, fabrics and stuff like that. And you, you had to, you couldn't eat certain meats and foods. And there's a lot of confusion. You'll hear a lot of kids and young people get things confused. Like they'll say, oh, well, you call yourself a Christian? Why are you wearing that cotton shirt? Or why are you eating pork? As if that is what what we are um, have to follow today. We don't have to follow any of that, most of it. Um, we don't have to uh, eat certain foods. We don't have to wear certain fabrics. We, we don't have to be circumcised. We, none of that means anything. Back then, that was the Jewish law. But when Jesus came in the New Testament, when he came, he did away with all that. And uh, most of it, anyhow, the, the moral laws still remain, of course. Thou shalt not covet, no murder. You shall not, you know, you shouldn't hate your brother. You know, love, thy, love your neighbor as thyself. Homosexuality, drunkenness. All those moral laws still remain. But there was like 600 of them, I believe, that we don't got to... We don't got to worry about any of that. Nowadays, when we want to eat food, we pray over it, and it's good. It's good with us. We pray over our food in the name of Jesus, and then we eat it. Now, God also gives us a brain and common sense. We know it's not good to eat bacon every day, so don't just just because it's not sinful doesn't mean it's smart to go ahead and do it anyway. Hope that makes sense. But um, anyway, the Old Testament was full of those laws. The New Testament is Jesus coming to fulfill all. He came to save us because he knew we could not follow the ways of, of, the, of the law that was in place at that time. He came to save us. And uh, basically the gospel is, which is the good news, is here's what it is in a nutshell. We were all born into this world, sinners, every one of us. The Bible says that no man is good, none righteous, and the truth is, is that we, because of that, we all are in need of a Savior. And that Savior is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God basically came down in a human suit 2,000 years ago as Jesus and lived among the people, did miracles, wonderful things. And then he died on the cross and he shed his, his beautiful blood for us and died for us. That atoning blood, that blood saves us. That's, that was a beautiful thing there that he did. As horrible as it was and horrific as it was, he died on our cross for our sins. That if we put our faith and trust in Jesus and repent and come to him, the Savior Jesus, we shall be saved. Okay? It's pretty simple. Um, and not by works. We're not saved by works. He makes that clear too. We can't do anything to earn salvation, to be saved. It's a free gift from Jesus and through faith by which we are saved. So, And none of us are deserving of it, by the way. We're all sinners and we all fall short of the glory of God, God the Bible says. I'm pretty sure everybody would agree with that. I know I do. I don't deserve it. But it's a free gift. So you'd be smart if you took him up on his gift. <laughs> Have your hands out. Yeah, there's some some other good books. No, they're all good. There's 66 books in the Bible for you new. That's you guys that are new to reading it. Um, some other t tips that if you haven't read the Bible before is whenever you see red words, that's Jesus speaking. That's verbatim what he said. That's Jesus. They're you know, the black words are anybody else who, who who's writing the Bible. Like in the book of Romans, this is Apostle Paul. So all these words are 
black. That's all Paul. He's writing that. But if you run across any red words anywhere, that's Jesus speaking in flesh. That's the man of Jesus. <clears throat> Some of you, I don't know if anybody's still watching, but I, I'm sure you're getting bored with me. I know. <laughs> Uh, I'm tired, but yeah, just just some tips there for anybody that's it's that's new. Um, I recommend that if you start reading this Bible, the Word of God, you start in the New Testaments. So you'll start in the book of Matthew. That's the first book of the New Testament, and uh, you can get through it, guys. It's not that crazy. I mean, look, it's it's not that many pages. The the, the Old Testament is a huge book. It takes forever to read, but. Um, Start there. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Those are the four Gospels, the good news. So I'll get off here now. And God bless you all. I'll do another video soon when I have my stuff together. I wasn't even planning on doing this, but I'll get back to this. All right. God, God bless you all. Bye.